Hey guys, it's Sapo here, and in this brand new series, we're looking at jungle. I've been making jungle for over 25 years, and we're looking at one of my tracks from like the late 90s. Uh, we're going to be showing you all that in Cubase 12. Also, we're going to show you how to replicate that hardware sound within the box within Cubase 12 using our stock instruments and plugins. So, chapter one in this series. Break beats, create a jungle break beat, layering it, processing it, how to replicate the hardware sound. Uh, chapter two, we're looking at sub bass and bass processing and bass layering. We're going to look at pad shop for stuff like that. Also, really cool, we're going to create a sub bass from scratch. So, exactly how I used to do it on the hardware, we're going to show you how to do it uh, in Cubase 12 using nothing else but all the stock instruments that are in Cubase 12 Pro. Uh, chapter three, mixing and mastering, that's what I do. We're going to show you how you can mix and master the beat or should I say the track, and because it's more jungle orientated and it's all about driving and getting gritty sounds and fat sounds, we're not looking at specific store mastering and stuff like that and the latest protocols, we're actually looking at just getting that big sort of hardware, fat, growly uh, sound within the box. And something else really, really cool, we're actually gonna incorporate uh, the Akai S950. So we're gonna compare things within the mix. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to get that sort of sound and how we do it in Cubase and how Cubase's uh, Groove Agent SE and, and Sample Track can actually replicate that hardware sound. And we're gonna show you an A and B between the two versions so you can actually see that with yourself. We're also gonna create the sub bass uh, just like the S950. And as a little treat, we're also gonna show you how to time stretch within Cubase just like the Ekai S950. So until then, let's go. So here we are, here's my track circumference. Uh, made it in about, I think it was 1999. Big shout out to Wolf Prophecy, it came out on his label New Vibe. I mean, it's over 23 years old, 22, 23 years old. Um, this is the track I made in Cubase with my Akai S950. Uh, <laughs> I think it was Cubase VST back then, long time ago. Uh, so the majority was samples and the rest was MIDI. So now we're gonna show you in Cubase 12 how to make it in Cubase 12 with samples and MIDI, but all in the box now, but still replicating that hardware sound. So let's have a quick listen to the track and then we're going to go into how we've got the breaks going because this chapter is all about the breaks, processing, in, processing, layering, uh, rearranging and all that kind of stuff and getting that warm fatness and replicating that hardware sound of the old samplers in our instruments like Groove Agent SE and Sampler Track. So Jungle, let's do it, let's go. circumference rolling jungle how did we do it so if I zoom in here uh, I'm gonna cycle this I'm gonna start with the main break so this is the main driving beat throughout the track so that's a beat coming out of Groove Agent obviously back in the days it came out the sampler uh, we're gonna show you something really cool in a minute so it's a hip-hop break And this is what we did, we chopped up old school hip hop breaks to you get, kind of get that grit and fatness if you're sampling them at lower, slower tempos. Um, and what I've done there is I've just chopped out the kick, the snare and the shuffle. Obviously we can chop up much, much more, but back in the days, the amount of sampler chops that you did, the amount of memory it took up. So 
that was also a big uh, sort of limitation, but also a creative limitation. Uh, so we're looking at getting replicating the hardware sound. So kick, snare, hi hat. Sorry, kick, snare, hi hat. So let's have more hardware flavor now. So. On Groove Agent SE, we have three different modes. We have standard, vintage, and turntable. Vintage is what we're going for. It makes a bit of a darker sound, and that's what you got from stuff like the 950 and stuff like that. You had that, I mean, it's 12 bit, so you're losing some bits there. Everything in the box now is 24 bit onwards. But in the old days, samplers were 16 bit and 12 bit and all that kind of stuff. And we're getting that sound. We're going for that sound, especially with the brakes, really important if you want to have that sort of old school jungle flavor. And now, all we're going to do is I'm on PC here, so control, I'm going to press control and I'm gonna select all of the elements that I want to control, and I'm literally gonna switch it to vintage mode. So let's say the difference between vintage, with and without. This is standard. Vintage. So it's really prominent on the snare. So let's just pick out the snare for a minute. I'm gonna go back to the snare. Here's a standard snare. Uh, vintage mode. So you can hear it already. You can hear it's taking some of that off. So from like 2K onwards, it's making that sort of darker sound. And believe it or not, this is actually really good for mixing other breaks as well because you then set with one frequency range where you can just add some tops on at the end. And that's what we did. You're making different jigsaw pieces and parts for a break to create your own break construction, jungle break, and then you can add tops. And that's the fun bit actually, adding the sheen like Eamon break, Big Bird break, Congo break, uh, natural rides, hi-hats and stuff like that and tambourines just to fill up the brakes and make your own so it's quite i personally find it quite good to be able to ha start have a darker sound and that's probably why i love sampler so much you get that sort of a uh, mid-rangey sort of darkness to work from and you get a lot of depth from that you know especially if you cut into vinyl as well so and this track came out on vinyl and the rest is history so to speak as you can see here we've got vintage mode on uh, we've got every element now and again, don't forget, you can actually just control if you're on a PC, it'd be alt on the Mac, and then you can actually choose to select multiple pads at once and do that there. Okay, so let's show something really cool now. So here's a driving brake, it's vintage mode, it's replicating the old school hardware type of sound, something like the S950, so it's like 12-bit kind of darker sound. So here's one I had earlier, recorded into the S950, the original break of that into the 950, and this is what it sounds like. And I'm just pressing the playback button to play back the sample out of the 950. It's going directly uh, into Cubase on this channel that I've set here. So here's the uh, Groove Agent SE version. Here's the Akai S950 version. Cubase, Akai S950. So you can see there, it's, the S950's got a little bit of a bump in the low end um, and a bit more of that sort of, sort of grit, sort of grunginess, but that's, it's hardware. And so yes, that's what hardware kind of does. It gives you, you know, the converters and all that kind of stuff inside there. You're dealing with like the hum of DCs and voltages and all that kind of stuff. So. That is really close. I'm really happy with that. Now, the great thing about having that then replicated and transferred into the box means that I can then go in even further. Uh, and in, obviously, in a, in a sampler realm, it's quite limited, not only by memory, but DSP and all that kind of stuff. So this is where being in Cubase 12, for instance, Cubase 12 Pro, I have all the tools now to even make it fatter or match it up more or even make it stronger. And this is where something like the multiband envelope shaper comes in, which is amazing. We can add that punch like this. So from around the low mid, so from 200 onwards to 5K, I've got that little punch pointing through. Uh, I've added more attack there as well from 5 to 1500 hertz. Sorry, 5000 hertz to 1500 hertz. Just to cut more of it through. And I'm really happy with that. And there's a slight bit of EQ, I'll turn it back on again. And um, we just rolled off some of that low and a bit of a dip there at 5K, so it's not too sharp. Now, the reason why we'd low, roll off the low off the brakes is because they were sampled off vinyl and you get that rumble and all that kind of stuff. And I would leave some in because it keeps the flavor 
if he's replicating the jungle sound, you may as well keep it not too clean and keep it sort of, you know, in that sort of realm where you can actually get some fat warmness kind of sound out of it. I would always say cut not boost. That's one of the major things to do, but because we're replicating a certain sound, we don't want it too clinical, we don't want it too clean, but definitely take out the low because the sub's got to have somewhere to go and fit in there. And it will take out some of that rumble and um, stuff that might be in there as well. So there we go. So this is supplemented with a kick and snare. So we'll reinforce that now with a kick and snare out of Groove Agent. Here's them both together. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know how to do this. Uh, if you haven't, you can always watch again, but if you haven't, I'm gonna quickly show you. Excuse me. Uh, so kick and snare, kick, snare. Now the great thing about Groove Agent SE, which is why I absolutely love it, it is nothing like it, to be honest, uh, is the fact that you can actually do stuff like not only chopping, but layering. The layering function is massively powerful. And this Groove Agent SE is in all versions of Cubase, so from elements all the way upwards. Uh, so kick and snare, and I've just laid them. So these three snares, and there's two kicks. And if you don't know how to do that, like I say, my other videos can show you, or it's a simple case of this. So, okay, so say we've got two kicks there. It's really easy, drag it to a pad. There's nothing on the pad, so nothing's relevant right now. There's your kick. Now I can bring another kick across. Obviously it can be any kick, this is just an example. Uh, you'll see three dialogues, and uh, now they become quite important. The plus sign, it's gonna add it to the pad. Uh, the arrow to the right means it's gonna swap the pad with what's already on the pad. And the three ones means it's going to be, for instance, if you drag the bunch of snares, it's going to map them chromatically up the keyboard. Again, there's only one snare on there. Uh, sorry, there's only one sample on there, one kick. We're going to go to the plus sign. There's our two kicks. And we can keep going, for example's sake, and keep going. And keep going. And there you have it. Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five kicks on one pad. So now uh, you can actually then choose to have the different types of layering mode. So it's really great for being able to actually make a real fat drum kit and stack it up and make it your own from a world of samples. It doesn't have to be kicks and snares. It can be sound design type stuff. It can be vocal chops. It can be a kick with a laser beam on top of it to make it sort of a, you know, an impact sound. Anyway, uh, layer mode is what we're going to. And there we go. So now you have all them kicks bashing together and then you can start making a real custom fat drum kit. And so what's all I've done with this track is literally reinforced that break beat. Now if you listen to it in the mix, it's really low because back in the days, the break beat was kind of the star in the jungle days. It was more like the, about the break beats. And so in the more sort of modern era, I suppose the more kicks and snares are quite prominent. So in the jungle times, and well, and particularly when I made a lot of tracks back in the 90s, we actually made these kicks and snares quite low in the mix. So they did reinforce the breaks, but they weren't the star of the show. The breakbeat was the star of the show and the way you organized and rearranged and programmed those breakbeats. So here they are, in, here they are together. So you get the idea they're not overpowering. And yes, like I say, the, the layering is what they've done. I've got the layers on there, two kicks and I've got three snares together, and it's really great to be able to do different types of layer mode. Okay, so next we've got this layer here. Uh, this is like a, a percussion type layer. And this is just a break I created. Um, it's resampled, and we'll show resampling in a second how easy it is to do um, in Cubase. And that's just literally layered with the other two. And that adds a bit of funk. So quickly looking at the channel, you can see here I've got frequency EQ and I've rolled off loads here. We don't need all this. So again, sub bass can go in here. Uh, it might clash with the other break as well. So definitely take off stuff you don't need. Don't be too surgical, because obviously if I go up to 1K, you're gonna miss loads of the mid range like this. And then you miss the vibe of the break, then you miss the it, see, it's missing something straight away. There's something missing. So you can put some mid back in that, low mid back in that. Uh, all the way to 100 and that's absolutely fine. And all that break is literally adding a bit of funk. Uh, it's going into one of our, our latest plugins, the FX Modulator, which is amazing. And so we've got like a flanger in there, compressor, some width, some reverb, actually gating in in time. 
So this is a great plugin. Dom's got an amazing video on this and it's in my last video as well about the liquid drum bass as well. It's got so many options. I, I mean, I just love the dice, to be honest. I love the dice. Just random curves. Uh, you can do side chaining in it, uh, envelopes, you can take custom envelopes. There's an amazing bank of presets. It's fully reorderable. Anyway, great plugin. And literally we're just doing that reverb into width, into a flanger, into a compressor, just to add some more funking energy to it. And again, the next one is the same break. Uh, it's the punch break, and I've sort of reinforced it. So this is the, like the layering thing again. So we would also layer a couple of breaks together to get that kind of sound, and this is two breaks together now. So it's the same break as this one. Um, it's just doing a slightly different pattern, and it's slightly eq differently. Again, that's audio. Uh, we've gone into a vintage compressor. Punch mode on. Not too much of a high ratio, definitely a fast attack because you want it to pick up those transients. Um, and that's it really. So you can see it doing quite a bit and I'm driving the input quite a lot, but I'm also compensating by bringing the output down. So it's kind of going into it and driving it and I'm not going too mad with the volume and mixing that to taste. So that's going into the envelope shaper for add our punch and then Again, one of my favorite plugins, as you can see, it's going crazy here. I've got reverb sort of going in, in a custom envelope in time, and that's just adding some sort of space and energy where I need it to be. Uh, it's supplemented with this Congo reverse break. We'll show you break in a minute. We'll show the full break in a minute. Uh, and that's just adding a bit more sort of flavor and movement uh, and a bit of identity to the break. And that's just adding a bit of variation to the break. So it's adding a bit of flavor and variation, I would say. So that is then supplemented with something from sample track. So I have a pickup break. Pickup break is something that I always, <laughs> I always do. I've always done in the track. Um, I always call it a pickup break, whereas the brakes are doing their thing and then something comes in later on that lifts it and it'll be doing like a more funkier sort of pattern. It's something that I've always done. It's my little thing that I do. Um, and I just love picking out old sort of hip hop breaks and chopping them up and having them low keys, low pitches, and then rearranging them into a sort of um, a pickup break. And this is my pickup break. So let's listen to it on, in isolation. And there's the MIDI of it all chopped up. And it's chopped up, I don't know, about 17 times here in sample track. This is great sample track because uh, one of the latest or the newer additions was the slice mode and it's great to be able to just throw a break in We can slice it We can even choose to drag the MIDI and rearrange it and that's what I did there You go to slice mode and then you can actually choose to drag the MIDI into the project Really simple and that's why I've got the MIDI in there. It's great I go back to playback mode and then I can choose what sort of rate I want so I can even go 12 bit so we can actually go Even further now and keep adding that sort of hardware old-school flavor and um, with our breaks and that's what I've done there. And obviously the rate reduction goes down a bit as well. So the bit rate, so you get that kind of grunginess and you can listen to it as well. It's quite, quite grungy. And in context with the rest of the breaks, you kind of hear what it's kind of doing and what its purpose is. So you can see step by step by step by step, we're building our own custom break. And this is what Jungle was kind of about, literally making your own custom breaks because you kind of wanted to have your own signature sound. So you would actually build up different types of breaks and like a jigsaw puzzle, you're fitting certain parts in certain places to create your own version of that. Um, because obviously a lot of the breaks out there were quite readily available. So you would always take bits of the breaks to make your own and put them together in, in whichever way. And that means chopping them, rearranging them, slicing them, layering them. And this is what I kind of still do now, but this is what I did predominantly a lot of in the 90s uh, with the samplers. Uh, so the next break is the Congo break. So <laughs> everyone will know this break. There's many names for it. I just call it Congo. Uh, there's a million names for this break. I can't tell you what it's called, the original break, but this is um, predominantly used in a lot of drum and bass, uh, liquid drum and bass, rolling drum and bass, jungle drum and bass, uh, and then definitely jungle in the, in the 90s. It was used quite a lot. Uh, so this break is quite mid-rangey. It's quite kicky and it's 
quite toppy as well. So it's got a, it's hitting a lot of frequency ranges and it's a great for adding energy, pace and sheen uh, to your brakes. But you have to remember to not go too mad with it and take out what you don't need because it can clash quite well because uh, it can clash a lot with other brakes. So here it is on its own. So you know the brake, um, everyone, <laughs> everyone in Jungle Drum Bass knows that brake. So as you can see here, frequency EQ, you know, I love frequency EQ. You can cut and boost at extreme values. I've done 48 there, but we could go 96, which is a bit too much because we're taking some of the brake out of the brake, if you know what I mean. We're taking some of the, uh, some of the depth and some of the fatness out of the brake. So we're gonna go 48. And with it being frequency EQ and, a, and an amazing transparent EQ, we can actually cut and boost at extreme values and without any real resonance or distortion. So I can do this. So you can do a lot in there. As you can see, it's, I mean, on our channel, there's loads of videos about frequency EQ. Um, I've done one in the master one that I did as well. It's a, an amazing EQ. It's an amazing, amazing EQ for many different reasons. Mixing, mastering, surgical cutting and boosting, all that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it all the way back and leave some of the low in because you want it to be replicating the, the old sound, which was obviously mixing desks and all that kind of stuff. So let's have a listen with that rolled out. So here's the break. So we're leaving some of that lows in and we're literally gonna take out a little bit of that dip at 100 where it's quite kicky because obviously we have a kick and snare there that are gonna be doing its thing and we don't want it to uh, clash too much with it but we also want it to kind of reinforce that as well and supplement what's going on there but it is a quite kicky break at 100 hertz so we've got taking a bit of that out and we're taking out a little bit of the mid here about 400s um a bit of the low mids are about 400s and we're definitely taking out some of that sort of high-end energy because it's a great break for that but it's going to be really sharp and we don't want it to be overpowering with those tops and here's what everything else sounds like so far So you can see that break there, obviously alongside the Amen break and the Big Bird break, definitely jungle breaks that you were used to add that sort of energy pace sheen um, and funk to the breaks. So my final break is this break, which is a resampled break. So what I've done there is I've actually resampled the channels uh, with some extra bits in Cubase. Uh, so one thing that was done quite a lot in the hardware days was um, resampling because there was no memory in the samplers. There was no memory, so you had to really conserve what you were using and think about how you're gonna save memory space and stuff like that, save RAM, save disk space. So resampling was always key to get something, you know, you get something that's fitting right, okay, I'm gonna resample it, bounce it down to a single break. And this is why Jungle was like more breakbeat sort of orientated because you were actually resampling and making your own breaks, not only to save memory, but to add your signature sound and create you know, your own sort of funk to things. Um, so here's the break, so really easily done. I just selected all the parts that I wanted to resample into one particular break. Um, really easy in Cubase, obviously set your marker points where you want, to, what parts you want to resample, what range you want to resample. Um, and then it's a simple case of pressing R and there we go, it's rendering and it's created a simple render there of that whole break. It's really easily done. Obviously with Cubase, everything's fully customizable. So your key commands, um, I think it's R on here, but it might be controlling R. I've set it as R, quick resample. Um, you can set it to anything you want to be um, in Cubase. So there it is, there's our break, ready to roll. And that's all I did with this particular loop. And when you hear it in context, let's remove that one. And when you hear it in context with everything else, you get the idea of adding more thickness, more depth, and a sort of more flavor to the breaks. So I'm really happy with that. So finally, in the last two channels, General MIDI, um, this was something that I always did. I absolutely loved using General MIDI. Channel 10 and most um, devices, SY85, the Sound Blaster cars when it was in the box, um, my Motive, Yamaha CS1X, CS2X, the Virus, Access Virus, and 
MIDI Channel 10 was always like the GM general MIDI kits. Now there was a purpose to this, there was a method of the madness to this because what I always thought was it added a bit of the rough with the smooth. So you added a lot of natural percussion and drum kits alongside the rawness of the resample breaks and 12-bit lo-fi sort of sound. And I think they, they kind of worked really well together and I did that for over 15 years and I still kind of do it now. Now the great thing about having it in Cubase, um, obviously Helen Sonic SE is in all versions of Cubase, is that they come with all these GM kits, uh, these general MIDI kits, there's quite a few to choose from. So if I go to here, drums and percussion, click on that, and I get to access to see all the kits. This one is, that I'm using is the Stereo Gem kit, but there's loads in there, hip hop kit, power kit, R&B kit, many, many to choose from. And all I've done here is literally added some of that. So it's got kind of like a ride symbol, and that's just adding a bit of that kind of natural flavour to go with the rawness. Again, let's listen to it in context with the rest of the breaks. And that's what it's doing, it's just adding that little bit extra. And you can see here what I'm doing with the TAMs, or the sort of rides, and um, how it's controlling them. So they're not too overpowering, and they're fitting nice in the mix. Frequency EQ, we've shown this, obviously, because we don't need any of that. And I would say this about most percussion, rides and all that kind of stuff and especially like general midi type stuff unless you're using a kick and snare unless you're using a kick and snare you don't need this you don't need up to 200 hertz you can take all that off uh, between one and five i've just got that little push up there just to make it cut through a bit more there's some slight stereo enhancement uh, and the image of tools on obviously making all this mono underneath and we're adding a bit of width here from 200 hertz onwards up to 10k and we're opening up that width wise just to make it a bit more expansive because you can do um, because it's just doing that it's literally just adding that sort of sugar and sheen on top of things um, and of course it's, it sounds more natural anyway and with the brakes the rollers of the brakes I think they fit and sit really really well together and that's kind of it apart from this bongo block which we'll look at in a second so there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight breaks. And that's how we would do it back in the days. We'd have a mixing desk. Uh, I still have a desk here now. And I still kind of do it the old way. But back in the days, we literally, we had smaller desks and stuff like that. And we had to think how we would use the channels. And so there's eight breaks and that's what we would do. We'd literally have one break or one part of a break per channel. And then you'd mix them all to make one gelled break. Uh, and that leave you with, if you're a 16 channel desk, which is most of the desks, uh, this track was made on a Mackie, I think it was a 1604 VLZ, which was a great desk uh, for getting that kind of sound. You could drive the channels. Um, so yeah, so half of them channels would be the breaks. And then obviously you'd have all your bass, sub bass, uh, effects and stuff like that. No buses really, literally just the channels driving. And you can see here, this is what it would be like. It literally would be, half of it would be taken up with the breaks and you'd mix this to sound like one break, and there you go. So the final one in the breaks is this little bongo block. Again, it's um, a general MIDI. <laughs> it's a general MIDI kit, and literally is, it says, the jazzy kit. And if you listen to it. And I think the great for that, like, it's great for adding that kind of natural bongos, natural, that's what it's made for, they're made to, show and uh, portray natural instruments and I think that re for me personally I think that works really well alongside the rawness of breaks and lo-fi kind of you know uh, kicks and snares and all that kind of stuff the, it, the rough with the smooth they fit fit really really well and all I'm doing there is adding that sort of like a little, a little bongo block let's listen to it in isolation And you see there, all that's adding is that little kind of percussion element, percussive element. And if you listen to it alongside the other general MIDI uh, kit, it sounds like this. So that has my natural element now. And if you listen to it all together, you kind of get the idea of the sound of the breaks. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they should sound like one gelled cohesive break.
And there's our brakes. And that was, that's the circumference brakes. That's how I did the brakes. They're exactly the same. I've just put them into Cubase. Um, and this is how you would gel them up to get create a jungle brake. Obviously, it's dependent on what brakes you use and what style of brake and how you chop them up and how you rearrange them. But generally, this is what I did for since 1994 this is how i did it this is what i did to make my own gelled signature type of brakes and again of course with it being cubase now and the power of modern software is that we can actually resample them in an instant bang there's our own brake i can export it save it and build up a whole folder of resampled fresh brakes and you can keep doing that and doing that and doing that so alongside the stuff like hello sonic se being able to add that a percussion element without having to dig a hi-hat and program it all that kind of stuff and get it all ready you can actually just open up a general midi kit add some natural percussion down it's ready to roll it's pretty well mixed to be honest if you look here on the tams you can see here what i did um on, sorry if you look here on the bongo bulk you can see here or uh, all i've added is an amp simulator just to cut through the mid and the treble it's quite good for that and the presence so to make it a bit more a bit more raw and that's it, with some Roomworks reverb, and then it just fits nicely. So yeah, so the final one was that, and it just, hopefully just fits all together, and that is our brakes. So there you go, that was chapter one. I hope you found something useful in there about the brake beat processing for jungle and layering and adding general MIDI in as well to, try, to kind of get that sound, to get that kind of rough with the smooth sound. Chapter two, sub bass from scratch. We're gonna show you how to create a sub bass from scratch, how to process it, how to layer it. We're gonna incorporate patch up as well. Uh, and so until next time, see you there.